Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about the different career options available to you after completing a degree in biomedical science. Given the broad nature of this degree, graduates have a lot of prospects after completing it and not only because of the subjects that they study, but also because of the range of transferable skills that they gain throughout the degree. According to Prospects UK, just over half of biomedical science graduates end up going straight into the employment. However, there's also a decent portion of people that end up going into further studies such as masters or PhD or medicine and various other career options I will cover in this video. The career routes that I will cover in this video today include both options, options where you need further qualifications and options where you can go straight into employment after completing your degree. However, I will say now that the options I will talk about are not the only options available, so you shouldn't feel like you're limited to these particular options. I did biomedical science at University of Birmingham myself, and from my cohort of graduates, we actually had people who ended up going into fields which are not directly related to their degrees, such as business, finance, and some people actually went into cybersecurity. I will not focus on those options here today, but I just wanted to highlight them just so that you're aware. The first option I'd like to talk about is clinical or healthcare science. In the UK, after completing a degree in life sciences, you have the option of applying for NHS Scientist Training Programme or NHS STP. The NHS STP is a three-year workplace-based programme where you will spend the first year doing rotations across a range of different settings and then you will progress into the remaining two years of the programme where you'll be specialising. When you apply for the STP, you typically apply for a particular specialism. However, not all specialisms are available every year, so it's important to double-check the application round. The specialisms included in the STP include physiological sciences such as cardiology or neurophysiology, as well as life sciences such as cancer genomics and hematology, and also a plethora of others. You can check out the full details of the NHS Scientist Training Programme in the link I've provided in the description box below. To apply for the programme, you typically need a 2-1 or a first-class degree, and you can sometimes get in with a lower second class as well, provided that you've got a further qualification, such as a master's, in the specialty you're applying for. Also, you will need to show that you've got some laboratory experience, which you would have obtained at least to some extent throughout your biomedical science degree. The next option I'm going to talk about is research, and that's an option I ended up choosing myself. To work in a scientific research, you need at least a master's degree. With a master's, you have an option of working as a research assistant or research technician in a lab, and you can work either at university or maybe even in hospital or industry settings. And you may also have the option of progressing up the career ladder and becoming a laboratory manager. However, it's important to understand that that job is more technical. Technical laboratory managers are typically responsible for supervising the maintenance of the lab as well as the different equipment. So there's actually less practical laboratory element in that job. If at some point in the future you're considering becoming a lecturer and running your own lab, then you will most definitely need a PhD. PhDs are very competitive, so a lot of people end up doing a master's beforehand. I actually ended up doing a master's and working before securing the PhD that I'm currently doing, which is great because it taught me that I can work in a lab in the long term and that I can cope with the fact that some experiments don't work, for example. So it is important to have lab experience before you apply for PhD and to be aware of the fact that things don't always work out. In the UK, at least, it's a three to four year commitment. So you kind of want to be sure that you want to commit to that. So anyway, a career in research is an interesting one, but you most definitely need other qualifications after your undergraduate degree. Next option is medical and scientific writing. It is possible to go into a career in medical and scientific writing straight after your biomedical science degree. Some people prefer to have a postgraduate qualification before they dive straight into work, and some jobs may require you to have a master's, but again, that depends on the job requirements and the individual organizations. As a science writer, you can work for universities, you can work in the media, and your job essentially will be um, writing the different social media content, and you may be communicating with professionals and the lay audiences. You can also write different articles and edit publications. So if you're really into writing and you're quite a creative person, then a medical and scientific writing career after your biomed degree is actually a really good option. In terms of skills and experience, it's a good idea to obtain some kind of writing experience alongside your usual studies. As a student, you've obviously got assignments to write and you've got a dissertation to write in your final year, so you would already have a good package of experience for the job. Some people also do some writing outside of their studies, such as writing a blog or writing for the university newspaper, for example. 
So if you fancy a career option of medical and scientific writing, then you've already got a package of skills and you can just do some things alongside your studies that will help you build your CV for that career. So yeah, gaining extra writing experience alongside your normal student work will really benefit you when it comes to job applications. Next option is forensic science. You can get a job as a forensic scientist straight out of your degree. However, it's entirely dependent on the organization you're applying to and the job description itself. Some entry requirements for forensic scientist jobs actually specify that you're okay to apply if you've got a BTEC or A-levels, whereas other jobs would say that you need at least a life sciences degree. Obviously, as a biomedical science student, you would have had the opportunity to gain some experience in a lab, which again would help you a lot when it comes to job applications. In terms of the role itself, there are different types of forensic scientists depending on the field that they work in. And the fields include chemistry, for example, where you would work with property crimes, biology, where you would work with people crimes such as murders, uh, rapes and assaults. And you've also got the area of drugs and toxicology. As a forensic scientist, you may have the options of working at crime scenes and you will also have the options of working in a lab. And this will depend on the kind of work that you'll be doing. Next option is clinical trials. After I graduated with my biomedical science degree in 2016, I spent a year working as a data manager on a national lung cancer trial, and I worked at the Cancer Research UK clinical trials unit at the University of Birmingham. My job involved looking at different patient data that came from the trials, such as their CT scan results, treatment dosing, their medical history, any adverse events that they've had, and also other types of data, such as laboratory results and post-treatment survivals. Alongside checking all the patient data and making sure it's all correct and collected in a good timely manner, I also had to review the patient eligibility to make sure that all patients are registered correctly into the correct treatment arms as per trial protocol. It's an office-based job. It's a job where you can progress up the career ladder and become, for example, a senior trial coordinator or a team leader. And you can also work in areas such as quality assurance. In terms of skills and experience, you would need some kind of admin work or some kind of document-based work experience, and this is something that you would have gained as an undergraduate student anyway. As a student, you work with a large variety of documents, and obviously, if you did a degree in biomedical science, then you spent three years working with documents, so you've definitely got a lot of skills and experience to bring to the table. Also, if you've ever worked in admin or in clinical trials before, then that would also really benefit you as an applicant. Also, just an important thing to note is that uh, the job titles do vary between different organizations. So my job was called data manager and uh, in some other organizations, it may be called clinical trial assistant or clinical trial associate. So make sure you look carefully through the job requirements when you're applying. Next stop is medical sales representative. Medical sales reps serve as a link between the healthcare professionals and the medical and pharmaceutical companies. The main responsibilities of medical sales reps include communication with clients, pitching products such as medicines or equipment, as well as monitoring the activities of competitor organizations. You may also be responsible for analyzing data and keeping up to date with the latest clinical data and with the new developments in the healthcare system. Your degree alone should be enough for entry into a medical sales job, and also if you've got commercial and business awareness and interest, that would also really benefit you. Next option is medicine. You have the options of applying for the standard five-year course, or you can also apply for the graduate entry course, which is four years. Graduate entry medicine is more competitive than the undergraduate because there is not as many graduate entry programs available compared to the five-year standard programs. At the University of Birmingham, for example, which is one of the universities that offers both options, the number of applicants per place or the applicant to place ratio is 23 to 1 for graduate entry medicine and for the standard five-year course it's about 6 to 1 and this information is correct as of the 2020 entry cycle. To apply for medicine you will typically need a first class or an upper second class degree and you will also need a good experience in a medical setting as well as a good performance in an admissions test. In the UK, there are three main admissions tests for medicine, and these are the UCAT, previously known as the UKCAT, the BMAT, and the GAMSAT. The type of admissions test you'll be taking will depend entirely on the type of program you're applying for and the university you're applying to. Another healthcare route which you can consider after your biomedical science is dentistry. Very similar to medicine, dentistry programs run for five years as a standard course and four years as a graduate course. 
The competition is also very high, so for example the University of Manchester has got about 68 places on their standard five-year programme and they get around 700 applicants per year. And this means that the applicant to place ratio is around 10 to 1, but this obviously varies with the different universities. The entry requirements for dentistry are very similar to that of medicine, so you will typically need a first class degree or an upper second class degree to apply, and you will also need a good amount of experience and a good performance on an admissions test. The admissions tests for dentistry are typically the UCAT and the BMAT, and again, the type of tests you will do will depend on the university and the program you're applying for. Another healthcare career option that people consider after their biomedical science degree is physician associate. The position of physician associate actually evolved from a physician assistant position in the US, where it's been around since the 1960s, whereas in the UK, I think physician associate has been established only in 2005. Physician associates or PAs work under supervision of a doctor and they can work in a variety of settings such as uh, general practice or GP surgeries and also in hospitals such as in the fields of acute internal or emergency medicine. Training for the PA is usually about two years and it normally involves theory and practical training. Usually it's run as a postgraduate training program, however very rarely you can see it as an undergraduate program which can last for around four years instead of two. I think at the moment in the UK only about two universities offer such option, so it's mainly available as a postgraduate qualification. You will typically need at least an upper second class degree, however you may also be accepted with a lower second class degree by some universities. So the main roles of the PA are around patient examination, treatment and diagnosis, and as I said earlier, the work under supervision of a doctor and provides support with patient management. Now, the last option I will talk about today is physiotherapy because it's not a very common option. In my cohort of graduates, I actually know one person that ended up pursuing physiotherapy as a career, so I thought I will highlight that here today. I think it's a really good option for somebody who has done their biomedical science degree and they realize that labs are not really for them and they like the idea of patient care, but they're not really into medicine, dentistry or the PA roles. Physiotherapists typically work with patients to help them restore their movement and function when they are affected by injury or disability or illness. Physios can work with a variety of different body systems, so for example neurological, where the patient have had a stroke or if the patient's got Parkinson's disease, musculoskeletal systems, such as when the patient's got a back pain or an injury, and also cardiovascular and respiratory systems, such as with patients that have had heart attack or patients with COPD or cystic fibrosis. Physiotherapists can actually get involved in education as well as research and also they can work in a variety of settings such as in GP surgeries or in a hospital environment. In the UK, physiotherapy is available as a two-year postgraduate training programme and it's offered by universities such as the University of Birmingham, University of Southampton, some London universities and also several others. Some postgraduate physiotherapy qualifications are available only for already practicing physiotherapists to further their qualification. However, the postgraduate physiotherapy route I'm referring to in this video is the one that is pre-registration, so it's for people who hold a life sciences degree that would like to become physiotherapists. So those are the 10 career options that you have after your biomedical science degree. Just as a reminder, you are not limited to these particular options. These are just the options that I chose to cover in this video. I will provide some useful links for you guys in the description box below, including the links to some YouTube channels which would help you if you were considering medicine. If you've got any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and share this video and make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.